Hello, I missed the first half of this. So my question is, um, is salt good to use instead of toothpaste? Salt? Yeah, I've had good results myself and I wanted to know if I could use a, it on my daughter. To, so you, you yeah. wet, the, wet the toothbrush, yeah, so sprinkle a little salt. What's, what's the, um, so what are the benefits of, of, of salt? Salt is, um, creates an osmotic gradient. So if the gums are inflamed, it helps fluids in the inflamed tissue to drain, right? We recommend salt water for a lot of things in the mouth and, and salt on the tears. Right? Here's the only thing that I have to say about that is that um, especially for young children, there really wasn't a suitable product for young children, in my opinion, um, until I developed Revitin. And it's one of the, you know, I was at Harvard Medical School in complementary and alternative medicine. And I came out of that program and I was like, toothpaste is garbage. It was flavored detergent for the mouth. It was invented by soap makers 150 years ago. And really uh, a study from Japan, I, I found in the 1970s, found that the two ingredients that are most important um, for the health of the oral tissue is vitamin C and CoQ10. As a matter of fact, everyone, and Sarah's giving 15%, if I could get rid of every product, if I, could, if I had to get rid of every vitamin but one, it, it, the one I would keep in my medicine cabinet is vitamin C vitamin C. And that's where they found scurvy and sailors on boats. They found it was a deficiency in vitamin C, but vitamin C is so important for the body. And this vitamin C, I actually developed this. This is a liposomal vitamin C that liposomal delivery, a lot of absorption. So salt, I would really, I understand you're, you're using that and you've been having good results in terms of cleaning it up, but you really want to kind of feed your children's smile, feed, feed their gums. And that's where vitamins are really important. And that's why Revitin is basically a vitamin delivery for the mouth. Uh, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Kiratola. And uh, up next, we have Steph O. I am going to unmute you. Hi, Steph. Hi, how you doing? Um, I'm, I came late, so please forgive me if you've already addressed this, but recently I've been um, brushing my teeth and I noticed there's like my gums bleed when I brush my teeth and I know it's related with cardiovascular issues and stuff, which I do have. So what would, what would, what would your advice be to me moving forward of how to get this together? Yeah, so that's a sign of gingivitis, which, which was a major thing that I talk about, a sign of it's the body's number one source of chronic low-grade inflammation. So you really need to, first of all, I would definitely get professional, uh, a professional examination and a professional cleaning, um, but because you may have been overdue, a lot of people during this shutdown we've come through this past you know, number of years, and, and a lot of people have avoided going to the dentist. And, and didn't go to the dentist. And I, I actually um, petitioned with the governor in the state of New York to say that we're going to create bigger problems because preventative health is just as important as, uh, you know, it, it's an important part of your immune health. So I petitioned for, for to open the dental, the dental offices open before any other healthcare practice. Patients, you know, were staying away from the dentist, their gums were bleeding, they, they were getting lots of inflammation. So um, believe it or not, Revitin would help you as well, because it's really effective in reducing gingival bleeding. So um, get a checkup, get a cleaning, use a good home oral care product like Revitin, take vitamin C. Vitamin C is great for bleeding gums. Scurvy, the gums bleed, bled like crazy. This is called Optimal C and it's liposomal delivery. You just do a teaspoon, keep it under your tongue for 30 seconds or so and swallow. Um, very, very good dietary supplement for bleeding gums. Thank you so much, doctor. Uh, all very valuable information for us. And I'm gonna move on now to Janet P. Janet P, I am on you. Hi, Janet. Hi, Janet. Janet. There we go. Hi, there we how go. are you? <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. I, um, my question is I regularly got my teeth cleaned and my dentist, I'm from the Chicagoland area, Illinois. 
I have waived the full um, uh, x-rays that they want to do every few you know, years. And it's been five years. And each time I waive the x-rays, I, um, I have to sign a uh, waiver that they are, you know, that I'm okay with it because they truly want to x-ray my entire mouth. And I've read pros and cons about it. Well, it's been five years and I was told at my appointment that I can no longer see this dentist if I do not allow them in a five-year period to x-ray my teeth. So what What's the deal on that? Is it I okay. have a healthy mouth? I'm I eat plant based, whole food, and I don't have any problems with my mouth. Do I need X rays? Uh, that is a fantastic question because yes, the older the older dental X rays, and you know, dentists were like, oh, you get checkup X rays every time you go. You get these little uh, they're called bite wing X rays, and then you do a full series every three to five years where we look at everything. It's a bit of a dilemma because I'm going to tell you something that, um, you know, what you see above the gum is the tips of the iceberg and what's under the gum is, is a host of different problems. I often had a brochure of what is shown by dental radiographs, tumors, infections, uh, fractured teeth, all kinds of things. So I am not a fan of dental x-rays because ionizing radiation is cumulative. Now, digital x-rays, 90% less ionizing radiation. So that's good. Make sure it's a digital system when you get an x-ray taken. I do not believe we use, my dental hygienist uses. So the bite wing x-rays are to check for cavities between your teeth um, that may be forming. And there's other technologies we have now called transillumination. So we have a transillumination device that actually illuminates your tooth and you could see a dark shadow, um, which is better than taking an x-ray. But a general set of x-rays when you start in a dental office is an important protocol, but they make sure that they're digital. Final thing, um, it's easier to do a CBCT, which shows everything. Um, and it's less exposure than doing 18 pictures um, uh, to do the, uh, the holistic CBCT, which is a cone beam computerized tomography. Again, another technology with very low exposure, very, um, very, very effective clarity of everything that's going on. But you know what? Unfortunately, dental x-rays are necessary. If you can't, you can't continue to go to the dentist without knowing what's going on below. Remember, what was what was below the uh, surface of the water is what's sunk in the Titanic. Okay, so you're looking at the tip of the iceberg. Look on. We need to see what's underneath to effectively treat you, competently treat you. Mm -hmm.